today on CityCast DC. You might think you have no connection to the way DC's parole system works, but since it's run by the federal government, it actually matters for all of us. There's an effort in DC to take control back from the feds. Emilia Kama of DC Policy Center tells us why and if it could really happen. Today's Monday, October 23rd. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. Okay, so I'm really excited to sort of get into a lot of the information about DC's parole system and some of the concerns that activists and researchers like your colleagues at the DC Policy Center have raised. But I really want to start with the crux of what's going on here. I can imagine that a lot of folks listening probably feel like they have no connection to the criminal justice system in DC at all. Why should those folks care? Like, why should this matter to people who have not been arrested or maybe feel like they don't know anybody who has? First of all, The federal takeover of D.C.'s criminal justice system in the parole's case means that fewer people are released when they're eligible for parole, which means that people are spending more time incarcerated. And in general, that's obviously bad for the people who are in the system, but also bad for the city as a whole. As people are incarcerated for longer periods of time, uh, it leads to worse outcomes overall. So people have a harder time getting back on their feet once they're released finding employment, um, and in general, just resettling into D.C. society. Also, these decisions are just really out of step with what D.C. wants and are not accountable to what D.C. is trying to do and our like actual wishes. And also, this is just a local control issue. And as we move to restore local control to government functions, Uh, One of the few things that we can do in this criminal justice system is take back control of our parole system. How does the system in D.C. work currently? Well, due to the Revitalization Act of 1997, authority was transferred from D.C.'s local board of parole to the U.S. Parole Commission. So right now, the U.S. Parole Commission makes just release and revocation decisions for people who are eligible for parole and then also revocation decisions for people who have uh, sentences with supervised release, in addition to the federal population that's eligible for parole that they still oversee. And this ties into an issue that we talked about when you were on the podcast earlier, the fact that D.C. residents are tossed into the Federal Bureau of Prisons and often are sent to prisons all over the country. So you could be you could live in D.C. your whole life, never have left D.C., but then get locked up and be sent anywhere because D.C. is not a state and it doesn't have its own prison. So as you said, it really is an issue of local control. It always comes back to D.C. not being a state. We'll throw the episode for that conversation in the show notes if folks want to listen. But it sounds like these two problems both have similarly harsh impacts. Is that sort of what you're saying? Absolutely. And unlike D.C. people in the Bureau of Prisons, where we're about 1% of the Bureau of Prison population, D.C. people are about 90% of the cases that the U.S. Parole Commission oversees. So it's about like 65%-ish supervised release, about 25-ish parole. Those are both D.C. populations. And then maybe 12% federal populations because the federal government abolished parole in 1984. So the number of people that they're overseeing is going down every year. And essentially the way that the federal U.S. Parole Commission grants and denies parole and use revocation decisions, it's just very different than how DC's parole board did that when we have control. So what's wrong with our current system? Uh, Well, there's several main issues. One is that fewer people are released at their eligibility dates than there were under the local system. This has happened because of a difference in application guidelines and an emphasis on the original charge and also hearing frequency. Under local control, when people came up under their parole eligibility date, about 77% of people were released within one year of their eligibility date. And now only 53% of people who are eligible for parole are released. So it's actually like pretty drastically lower. Uh, Additionally, there's much higher rates of denials and revocations, especially for technical violations. Uh, Around 10% of people in jail are for alleged violations of their parole. 
And that's reduced a lot over 10 years, but there's no actual data on cases and why these people are being denied or why these revocations are happening. And additionally, there's a serious lack of transparency from the U.S. Parole Commission for a lot of really basic information. So, for example, like people who are incarcerated often have a hard time finding out when their hearing date is. They have to keep asking the U.S. Parole Commission, when is my hearing date versus actually just being informed of when the date is. A lot of attorneys have also complained about not getting relevant case information. They have also complained a lot about documents going missing or not actually being in the case files, even though they've been filed. And then finally, uh, a lot of people have spoken about in the past that a lot of times parole is denied because uh, the U.S. Parole Commission says they need certain programming or certain things to be done. But then those programs are not actually offered at the facilities that people are at or the wait lists are, you know, 10,000 people long and people can't actually get into those systems. And so then they just end up in this catch 22 where they need a program to be released, but can't get into that program. And the first part really sounds like it goes back to that point about the lack of transparency that you mentioned. That's like, there's just not a lot of visibility into how everything works. Absolutely. Yeah. We have pretty much no information about what decisions are being applied to hearings, how many hearings are held, uh, really any of this basic information we would need to know how the system is functioning. Picture this. You're at the airport or strolling to the grocery store, and suddenly there they are, someone who seems tailor-made for you. You know that feeling, right? That instant connection you can't ignore. But then they leave. Another missed connection? Not so fast. Introducing Never Missed, the revolutionary dating app that turns those chance encounters into unforgettable beginnings. It's simple. Download the Never Missed app for free right now on the App Store or on Google Play. In just moments, you'll be ready to transform fleeting glances into lasting connections. Don't let serendipity slip through your fingers. Embrace the possibility and excitement of finding your someone right when you least expect it. Download the Never Missed app and make your story of how you met an unforgettable chapter in your journey. So stepping back, why doesn't DC have control over our own parole system? Is it related to statehood or is it something else? No, under the Revitalization Act of 1997, uh, because of the financial trouble that we were in and issues with improvements needed for DC's criminal justice system, pretty much the whole criminal justice system was transferred over to federal control. And now the US Parole Commission expires every usually like two to three years. So actually it's going to come up for renewal again this November, 2023. And because we don't have a local system in place, we're all expecting it to just get renewed for another period of time. But for the last, I wanna say 10 years, Congress has been renewing the US Parole Commission's authority every two years. Are there any alternatives being proposed? Absolutely. So there are two systems that people in DC are considering for local control. One is to set up a new board of parole. And the second is to have DC Superior Court be in charge of release decisions. There are pros and cons to each of these. Essentially with a parole board, the main con is people argue that these people are politically appointed. And so there's incentive not to release people to appear tough on crime. And with DC Superior Court, the issue is more capacity that they would need more staff and more judges to oversee like a much higher caseload. What do they do in other places, like other cities and states? How does it work there? Uh, yeah, these are all state systems. There are 17 states that have determinate sentencing systems, which means that there is no parole. There's just supervised release and there's like a set release date. And then 34 states have indeterminate sentencing systems. So a minimum period and a maximum period I usually have eligibility for parole. And in most of these cases, there is a board that determines whether or not people can be released. So with all the different ways that you've laid out how this system is kind of failing uh, residents, why haven't things changed? Well, I think there's three main reasons why this hasn't changed too much. Uh, one is the lack of movement from local government. Uh, there was a time where we were looking at 
different solutions, but for the most part, that progress has stalled. The second is that this would take congressional approval to get done. And recently, given what Congress has been doing in regards to other DC crime bills, a lot of people don't expect that they would approve more local control, as it seems like they're trying to have more congressional control over DC systems. And the third is just this indecision about which system to set up. There's kind of experts on both sides arguing about, you know, which one they think would be better having a local parole board or having the ports take it over. And there's pros and cons to each. So we would really have to decide which one we're going to do moving forward. And it would take a little while to set up. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, is there any timeline for revising this or looking at this? In November, when they renew the authority of the U.S. Parole Commission, we'll have a new end date for when that authority ends. And I think that would be the new timeline under which we could get something together moving forward. Good to know. So what are all the things that would have to take place for D.C. to take back control if that was even something on the table? We would have to put a new system in place to take over this function. So first, we would have to decide what we're going to do, whether that's a new parole board or have the courts take it over. Uh, we would have to introduce legislation setting that up, and that would have to be passed by D.C. Council. And then uh, we would have to get some sort of congressional approval as well, at the very least, to not renew the U.S. Parole Commission, but probably to transfer authority to D.C. Amelia, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then.